Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by... By Huron Lady River Cruises in Port Huron, offering daily sightseeing trips and private cruises. Sightseers will experience the International Blue Water Bridges, Great Lakes Freighters, the Fort Gratiot Lighthouse, and more. Huron Lady River Cruises on the web at HuronLady.com. Welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Olson, and we are into August, which means bow season is not that far away. We're all pretty excited about that. On this week's show, we're doing a bow review for you. We're gonna cover all different sorts of compounds for men, women, and kids. We'll show you some new crossbows that are out on the market, all sorts of exciting stuff to get you geared up for archery season. And Jimmy's got some other fun stuff for us too. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have a few more things on this week's program. After we do the bow review, we're gonna head north above the bridge to Escanaba, and check out the National Trappers Convention that just happened up that way. We're also going to have some information for you mushroom hunters out there. Turns out there's more mushrooms in the woods than just morels. And we're going to end this week's show with you, the viewer. We're going to have a bragging board segment. So lots of good stuff on this week's program. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger, and it's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor the autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or visit greenstonefcs.com. By Meyer, a destination for hunting, fishing, and camping. From bug spray and tents to GPS and gas, Meyer has nearly everything you need to take on nature and get you there. Meyer. By Zimmer Roofing and Construction in Port Huron, featuring Duralast roofing systems made in Michigan. Zimmer Roofing and Construction provides installation, maintenance, service, and repair, serving commercial and residential clients on the web at zimmerroofing.com. By Country Smokehouse, offering a variety of meat products, Country Smokehouse is located three miles south of I-69 on M53, just south of Imlay City. Country Smokehouse is a meat processor, a butcher, and a destination for sportsmen. Hi, I'm Jordan Brown, and we kick off this week's show up here at J Sporting Goods in Clare, where Gabe Van Warmer and I were able to take a look at some of the new bows on the market for 2014. Okay, so we kick things off here with the Prime Alloy. This is their new bow for this year. It also features a new camo scheme. This is the Optifade Camo, a really sharp looking bow. Uh, a couple of things that we're starting to see out of Prime year in and year out, we got this parallel cam technology. It makes this a really smooth shooting bow and a very accurate bow. Um, another feature on this bow that's becoming a staple on the Prime bows is the high glide system here with the rollers. Really nice system. You might not notice it until late in the year when maybe a normal cable slide would squeak a little bit. You're not going to get any of that out of this bow. In addition to that, another thing that Prime has done, um, if they put a warranty on their strings and cables, a lifetime warranty. So after two years, no matter what happens to the bow, if you need new strings and cables, they will send you a free set of strings and cables. Really cool thing. Not many other uh, bow companies in the industry are doing anything like that. Uh, that's in addition to the lifetime warranty on the regular bow. All in all, this is a very smooth and a very accurate bow. Next up, the Carbon Spider by Hoyt. Well, this is the next generation in uh, carbon technology from Hoyt. This is the Carbon Spider, and it is, uh, uh, it's on your high end. I mean, this is going to cost you upwards of um, quite a ways over $1,000 for this bow. But what you're going to find is it's going to be a very, very lightweight bow. There's not much to it. I mean, it weighs nothing but this carbon fiber design is extremely strong. Um, another thing at the top here, up near the limbs, these are called air shocks. 
these rubber air shocks actually capture the limb as it comes back to rest so it actually quiets everything down and it results in a very quiet dead in hand shot. Um, I really like this bow but it may be on the upper end of what people can spend but as far as a, a bow is concerned awesome awesome bow. Next we have the Full Throttle by PSE. Okay next up on the review we have the Full Throttle by PSE. This bow Everything on it is built for one thing, and that's speed. This is the fastest bow on the market, and is the fastest bow I've ever shot, and it's not even cranked up all the way. It's only around 60 or 62 pounds now, and this thing flies. Uh, anytime you go for that much speed, there are some drawbacks. It's not the smoothest bow in the world. It's not the smoothest to draw or shoot, but that's what you're going to do if you're really trying to get those upper end speeds. If you're looking for a bow that's fast, this is the bow. Another thing that you're going to notice on this bow is it has an extremely short brace height. And this is what I'm talking about when I say brace height. But that's what you give up to get speed. Like I said before, this bow is designed 100% to be as fast as it can be. And PSE has done that with this bow. It may not be the most comfortable bow, but if you're looking for speed, this is the bow for you. Next up, the Energy 32 by Elite. Well this here from Elite is the Energy 32, so it's 32 inches axle to axle. It's got a very generous brace height, so it's going to be a very forgiving bow. This is what I would call a bow hunter's bow. It is in mid-range mid for price, so it's not going to cost you a whole lot, it's not going to break the bank, but you're going to get a high quality bow for that money. I like the smooth draw on it, and it's dead in hand when you shoot it. Without the stabilizers, it really shows you what these bows will do, and this one doesn't move when you when you touch it off. Um, got a nice uh, uh, design to the riser here, um, and it just doesn't move in your hand. I love this bow, and uh, would be a good one to have up in the tree stand come this fall. Next, we take a look at some of the package bows on the market for 2014. Well, we wanted to make sure we covered all our bases in this review, and, and we're kind of done with the upper end bowls. We looked at four really nice top end bowls, but not everybody has a thousand dollars to put on a bow. Matter of fact, a lot of guys don't. So we wanted to look at some other options for those hunters who would like to get into a new bow, but maybe don't have the money to buy one of the upper end ones this year. Um, all these bows here that I'm looking at, these are all package bowls. We got one from PSE, one from Hoyt, and one from Bowtech. The nice thing about these bows is they are completely ready to go. You literally just have to add arrows. We have a quiver, sight, rest, stabilizer, everything. And now for these bows, uh, each brand is a, a little different and what they offer is a, a tiny bit different, but for the most part, you're getting the same kind of package in that five or $600 range. Um, and that's everything on it. So that's really not a bad price. And the important thing to remember, a lot of these package bowls are the same technology as the high-end bowls from a couple of years ago. The archery world changes so fast and the technology is always changing that you can get into a bowl that maybe two years ago would have been a thousand dollars and now you can get it for five or six hundred with everything set up. So just because it's a package bowl and it doesn't cost quite as much as some of the others doesn't mean it's not a great bowl. These are all nice bowls, all good shooting bowls and very affordable. Next, we take a look at a few of the women's bows on the market, as well as one bow that'll work for just about anybody. Well, purple isn't necessarily my color, but the new women's bows out on the market are simply astounding. These are high-end bows. They have a little bit of the color treatments that are pretty cool. This is the Carbon Rose. The Hoyt Factor is another one we got a chance to take a look at, and these are unbelievable for the high-end bows. But if you're not looking to spend that kind of money, you could pop into a bow like this. This is the Hoyt Ignite. Now, the cool thing about this is, if you've got a kid who's growing like a weed, this goes 19 to 30 inches, and it goes 15 to 70 pounds, which means I can hand this to my kid who is seven years old, and he can shoot it, and then I can crank this up and adjust the cam, and I could shoot it. This is simply amazing. This is going to be the last bow you buy for your kid because it'll be so adjustable. And the nice thing is all the adjustments are done with an Allen wrench. So it's very, very easy to make these adjustments. Don't have to go to a bow shop. Okay, well as promised, we're not going to skip anything. And that means crossbows too. Now neither one of us shoot crossbows or have a whole lot of experience with them, but we'd like to go over a couple of the newer models, at least show you guys what's out there for 2014. Well, the first bow we looked at was the Striker by Bowtech. 
And uh, this bow has a unique system because the cams are tilted backwards so that you get a little more on your power stroke. Power stroke is where you get all the speed on a crossbow. And this one can do it in a little more compact area because of this reversed cam design. So also it's a very lightweight bow. It's uh, probably good for a kid or a, or a woman hunter. The next bow we looked at was the 10 point Titan Extreme and 10 point has kind of built a reputation for itself and you, you know what you're getting with their crossbows. There's not a whole lot that's fancy but this is a very good shooting bow and if you're uh, you know, disabled or you're older or you have a tough time cocking these, it has a very nice cocking mechanism that makes it extremely easy in the woods, next to the truck, wherever you're loading up at to be able to shoot all in all a pretty solid crossbow. The last bow we took a look at was the Excalibur and it has a recurve limb system. This allows it to be a very simple design. If the string were to ever break, you could use a, a strap that comes along with the bow that you could pull it back, put a new string on without going to a bow shop, which when you're up in Canada on a bear hunt or something, could come in handy. So this is a very solid design, a good trigger on it, and it's uh, fairly lightweight as well. It's a good bow. Well, that's just a few of the bows on the market for 2014. We try to cover as much stuff as we can. If you are looking for a new bow, get up here to Jay's or go to your local sporting goods shop and shoot a few of these bows yourself. That's the best way to figure out what you like. Either way, good luck to all the bow hunters hitting the woods this year. Well, special thanks to Jordan and Gabe and all the guys up there at Jay's Sporting Goods for letting us take a peek at some of the new bows that are on the market. Whether you're a horizontal bow fan or a vertical bow fan, lots to consider if you're looking for a new one this year. Well, let's shift gears a little bit and head north above the bridge to the town of Escanaba for the National Trappers Association Yearly Convention. Just over a week ago, the town of Escanaba in the Upper Peninsula was overrun by trappers. The National Trappers Convention came to Michigan, and it was a lot of fun and some interesting characters, to say the least. Uh, my wife and I share the position of Director of National and International Affairs for the National Trappers Association. We do some lobbying on their behalf and also do some media relations with them, so helping to promote the sport of trapping through that organization at the national and sometimes international level because most of our furs are sold across the, the, the big water. Nice. Uh, Europe is still a big buyer of furs along with China and Russia. We have people attend here from all over the country. I've met people already from Alaska, Florida, Maine, California, and, and a lot of the states in between. Also, prior to this convention, we have the board of directors meeting for the organization where they set policy and budget and everything and agenda for the coming season. So it's not just a trade show, it's, it's a lot of things going on for the organization and people come here for all those different reasons. But a lot of them come here to buy their supplies, see friends that they haven't seen for a year, to learn some new things with the uh, demo area, the educational seminar type uh, setting that we have. And it's just a great family destination for many of them. It's their vacation for the year. This demo area was really impressive. The time and detail that went into this made it like you were on the side of a creek and really was a big draw for the four-day event. It's a joint role with UP Trappers and the National Trappers Association. And my wife and I are, are the convention coordinators for the National Trappers Association. And the UP Trappers guys really went all out on this demo area. I mean, it's fantastic with the, with the video screen, multiple camera angles, putting a beaver pond in behind us, a beaver dam, beaver lodge, muskrat huts, feed beds. I mean... Every demo guy that's been coming in here said, man, this is just an awesome setup. So it's, it's really been one of the best ever, I think. So. Now, is, this, is this for the hardcore guy or for the beginner or both? Everything. Depending on what you're looking for, we have different seminars from beginner trappers all the way up to the hardcore, you know, professionals. Now, Trent is an avid trapper himself here in Michigan, and he was very proud of the work that the folks here in Michigan put into this event. Escanaba, the community here in, in the western UP has embraced us. I mean, the media coverage of this has been unbelievable, and we are seeing all kinds of just people that are curious about trapping and interested in trapping coming, coming out. So it's been a fantastic show so far. And there's a ton for people to see out there, isn't there? Oh, yeah, there's everything. You can't, I mean, there's just so much to go. The tailgates, I mean, in this convention, we not only have indoor vendors, which are some of our big retailers in, in the nation, but we also have just local tailgaters that are coming out to sell their wares and you know, it's been a great show. The DNR was also on hand answering questions and doing what they can to promote this sport. Well, we're really here to kind of showcase uh, the Predator Prey Project, how we use trapping in, the, in research roles, and also answer general questions to the general public about trapping in our state and promote our state. Um, we're really pushing the Pure Michigan hunt, um, the MI um, capabilities online, 
and talking about the new license package and what it means okay. on what we're doing on the ground. It's a sport we'd like to bring more people into. That's why we're starting um, getting hunter or trapping education into our state um, to bring in those new um, trappers. This is a great place to come down and learn about trapping. There's demos all day long. So you know, if you're into trapping, this is sure is the place to be. One thing I did ask Dave was just what can the trappers do to help recruit new folks into their sport? You know, recruitment is, is an issue in any of the outdoor sports, and trapping's no exception to that. And we have programs at the national and state level to help with, with new trapper recruitment. Uh, a lot of places work with their local divisions of wildlife or wildlife departments in putting on uh, seminars there within their states, educate young people that want to, you know, come into the sport of trapping. It usually takes somebody like a mentor for those people. It, there's a lot of things to learn, and it's a lot easier to learn if you've got somebody kind of leading you along the way. So those opportunities are available. A lot of places you can go online, check out your state trapping association online, and uh, sometimes they'll have some information there to help get people started. Oh, I get the excitement of deer hunting, or the flush of a grouse, but I asked Dave just what drives the trapper to hit the woods. It's difficult to explain to a non-trapper sometimes the passion we have for our sport, but to the deer hunter, I, I, I say, what drives you to sit in a tree all day? At least I'm out moving around and doing something, and, and, and every day I've got probably a catch, uh, a lot of times a multiple catch. But we're driven by the same things. What keeps the guy in that bass boat casting time after time after time? What, what keeps anybody out in the field like that? It's the same passion for being out in the outdoors. Uh, and in our case, it's, it's harvesting a renewable resource. And since it's an exported commodity, we're getting some of our dollars back from China. So we feel like we're helping out the local economy at the same time. Thanks to the fine folks of Escanaba for showing off our great state. Thanks to the trappers for doing what they can to promote our trapping heritage here in Michigan's Out of Doors. For our next segment on this week's show, I was able to spend some time in the southern part of the state to do a little summertime mushroom hunting. Normally when you think about mushroom hunting here in Michigan, you think about springtime morale hunting. Well, as it turns out, there's actually some pretty good mushroom hunting to be had this time of year. My name is Phil Tedeschi. I'm president of the Michigan Mushroom Hunters Club. I started hunting mushrooms after I took a class in 1971. It's been a hobby ever since. Um, I get out every year. Now that I'm retired, I get out uh, maybe four or five times a week even. But uh, before when I was working, of course, it was only occasionally weekends. Uh, it's a hobby that uh, goes from, oh, late uh, April until early November, or even mid-November sometimes. Um, there are thousands of species of mushrooms that grow in Michigan. Some are very specific, like morels, that only grow in uh, April and May. Uh, some, like oyster mushrooms, grow year-round. Uh, it has been a hobby for a very long time, and it's a very rewarding hobby, because not only do we see interesting things, not only do we spend our days out in the woods, but uh, we wind up with excellent edibles after, after the hunt. We were finding all sorts of mushrooms today, but the main mushroom we were looking for was the chanterelle, an edible mushroom whose taste rivals that of the morale mushroom. As a matter of fact, the morale mushroom barely cracks the top 10 taste-wise for this mushroom hunter. This time of year, there are probably around 30 species of mushrooms that are, that are edible out in the woods and at least 20 of those are worth picking anytime you find them. This season of the year, my very favorite mushroom, the black trumpet, grows along with the chanterelles. Now, these are just an excellent edible. Uh, cream of uh, chanterelle soup is something to die for. Uh, just hunting morels, you're missing out on a lot of good mushrooms. As I say, this is number two on my list. The white morel is number seven. The black morel is number eight. So I think there are, here in the summer and in the fall, mushrooms that far exceed the morels as being excellent tasting mushrooms. Now the chanterelles specifically will grow predominantly in white oak forests and we have some uh, excellent white oak areas here in southeast Michigan. This mushroom has two slightly poisonous look-alikes. 
but slightly poisonous. I mean, you might get uh, sick to the stomach. You can learn quite easily to distinguish between those mushrooms. Uh, the simplest distinguishing is the fact that these have white flesh and the other mushrooms have orange flesh. Uh, joining a group like our club, you can learn these uh, details of identifying the mushrooms. To tell this from the two poisonous look-alikes, uh, chanterelles have white or slightly yellow flesh. The two look-alikes have, have orange flesh, the ones that can get you sick. Looking for mushrooms has become a year-round passion for Phil. It begins in the spring with the morale mushroom and continues all the way into November and even into December and January if we have a warm thaw. And Phil's not alone. He and the Michigan Mushroom Hunters Club hunt all over the state almost all year long. Our club hunts from April to November. Uh, various mushrooms have various seasons. The chanterelles here come up in July and August. The morels come up in spring, in April and May. Uh, mushrooms like the hen of the woods mushroom, a very large edible mushroom, uh, averaging three to five pounds, the ones we pick, uh, grows in the fall, in uh, September and October, basically. And uh, all year round, there are great mushrooms out there to find, but very few people looking for them, unlike the morel season. Uh, usually, if I run into someone in the woods hunting mushrooms, anywhere is around here, it's someone I already know, someone who's in our club or who has been in our club at some time. It is, it is an addictive hobby. As I say, 40 some years, and I still get to the woods very frequently. If you're interested in learning more about summertime mushroom hunting or just mushrooms in general, you may want to look into the Michigan Mushroom Hunters Club as a place to start. Special thanks to Phil Tedeschi for showing me around today, here in Michigan's Out of Doors.
Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. If you get a chance, make sure you check us out online. You can do that a couple of different ways. You can visit our Facebook page at Michigan Out of Doors TV, or you can visit us on our website at michiganoutofdoorstv.com, where you can see wild game recipes, a little history about the show, even check out some old and new episodes there. And speaking of new episodes, you won't want to miss next week's show. Well, we do have a lot of brand new things coming over the next few weeks here on Michigan Out of Doors. One story that I'm pretty excited about is a musky fishing story from smack dab in the middle of the upper peninsula you won't want to miss that also we're going to stop in with our good friend bob garner over the next week or so and do a little fishing out of the port of frankfurt you won't want to miss that and hey if you're in the west part of michigan our friends over at the fin and feather club in mason county are having a big bow camp rendezvous on august the 16th you might want to check that out so lots of good stuff happening all around the state of michigan and if we don't see you in the woods or on the water hopefully we'll see you right back here next week Michigan Out of Doors is presented by, by Rosie Brothers. Located in Dryden, Michigan, Rosie Brothers has been serving Michigan for over 40 years. Specializing in outdoor needs, Rosie Brothers features Kubota tractors and equipment for use in farm, home, or commercial needs. On the web at rosiebrosinc.com. By Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises of Munising, exploring Lake Superior's Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore with its sandstone cliffs, caves, waterfalls, and lighthouses. Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises on the web at picturedrocks.com. Buy propane, exceptional energy. Propane retailers promote the safe use of Michigan-produced gas energy in homes, farms, and businesses across our great state. Learn more at usemichiganpropane.com. Buy Meyer, a destination for hunting, fishing, and camping. From bug spray and tents to GPS and gas, Meyer has nearly everything you need to take on nature and get you there. Meyer. Closed captioning is brought to you by Propane Exceptional Energy. Propane retailers promote the safe use of Michigan produced gas to outdoor enthusiasts across our great state. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above.